welcome back to this week's Mondays with Madison. I am so excited for Kate Nifton, a member of Texas Rowing and US Rowing, to join me this week. We are going to talk about her rowing journey, growing up in Austin, why she came to Texas, a little more about US rowing, and more about the person behind the athlete. So make sure y'all keep watching. This is gonna be a great one. <laughs> So let's get started. Kate, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, hi, my name is Kate. I'm a fifth year senior on the women's rowing team and I'm studying sports communication. I'm also from Austin, Texas. Before we jump into the questions about you, why don't you tell the viewers since rowing is a little bit of a sport that not many people know about, why don't you just give us a little background on the different boats and how the races are set up with the distances and all of that. Yeah, so um, at NCAAs, which is our biggest um, competition of the year and kind of what we train for all year, there's three boats that race. There's the first eight, um, which has eight people and a coxswain, the second eight, which is another eight people, a coxswain, and then a four, which is four mm -hmm. rowers and a coxswain. Um, each people, it's sweep rowing, which means that everyone has one oar. Mm -hmm. um, schooling is where everyone has two oars, but that's more of like Olympic level or um, international racing. Okay. Um, and each boat is worth a different amount of points um, at NCAA. So you prioritize um, the first eight, then the second eight, and then the four. Mm. Um, but all of the boats come together to have the um, like the team points at the end. Right. So you can win each individual boat, but then you can also win as a team or get on the podium as a team. Okay. Um, and then the distance is 2,000 meters. So in an eight, it takes a little over six minutes. And in a four, it takes um, around a little less than seven minutes. Mm -hmm. um, in the fall, sometimes people will do what's called head racing, which is 5,000 meters. Wow. Um, <laughs> but that's not what we compete at mm -hmm. with NCAAs. Okay. So then are the races designed like that at every single meet that you go to? Or is that more just the NCAA championships? Yes. So each race is 2,000 meters in the spring. Um, the only difference is usually... Um, throughout the season leading up to NCAAs, we'll just race one or two teams at a time, Got maybe it. a couple more. Mm -hmm. And then at NCAA, since there's a lot more boats, there'll be a heat one day, a semifinal one day, and then the final on the third day. Okay, got it. That's super interesting. So how did you originally get into rowing? Did you play any other sports growing up and why did you pick rowing ultimately? Yeah, so growing up, um, I did a lot of different sports. I played volleyball, did summer swim team, and then I did a lot of dance mm -hmm. um, for most of my life. But my dad is actually a rower. He rowed on the club team at UT and then owns Texas Rowing Center in Austin. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, he like is super big fan of rowing, mm -hmm. um, always wanted me to join. And then I eventually um, quit dance and started rowing in high school. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was kind of something that we did together. So um, Father he, daughter bonding. Yes, he would always like practice and stuff like that. So um, that really motivated me to like stay in it. And um, then I eventually came to UT. What a cool inspiration, having your dad be the person that got you into it. Yeah, definitely fun at times a little bit. <laughs> gets Some, competitive. Sometimes the pressure. But yeah. Exactly, but it's, I love it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, we, like we said, you are from Austin and you came mm -hmm. to UT, so what was the recruiting like coming out of high school? Because you were ranked very highly. You competed at many U.S. Junior World Championships mm -hmm. and were on the U.S. Junior team. So what was recruiting like for you out of high school and why ultimately did you pick Texas? Yeah, so um, in high school, it was kind of funny because like we share the same body of water mm -hmm. as the UT team, um, my high school team. So basically you row five minutes down the river and you can get to my high school team from like our practice no facility way. now. So I think that they saw me probably like all the time on the water. 100% um, the exposure is right, right there. Exactly. So then it wasn't like hard to um, like have them be aware of me, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And then also um, my dad had like a relationship with the coach, um, just both being like rowing club owners in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, when I was looking at colleges, I was really interested in coming here just because I'd seen the program grow like right in front of my own eyes. And I could kind yeah. of see like, I always saw um, the boats like pass by during practice and we'd always kind of stop and just like watch them row by because they were be so good. Be a little starstruck. <laughs> exactly, I knew who like every single one of them was. We'd see them at different races and I'd be like, oh, like there's that one or that mm -hmm. one. Like I um, just thought they were so cool. and. Um, just growing up, my grandparents and both my parents all went to UT, so mm -hmm. big Longhorn, Longhorn family. Blood. Yeah, a lot of like <laughs> Texas pride, and I kind of just felt like 
coming here it was like my school in a way mm -hmm. and i really wanted to help like the program that i kind of saw and kind of inspired me to stay in rowing totally so. and not only did they see you like you said like you were watching them and that's yeah. kind of like a dream come true in a sense watching yeah. them as you're growing up and rowing right next to them yeah for sure so now that you are a super senior you have won three big 12 championships would have been four if it wasn't for covid and then two national championships what does your training season look like in the off season as you prepare for that super senior season in the spring yeah so i think um during the off season we do a lot of just like cardio um like long practices that are just like building our base mm -hmm. um different kind of cross training and like rowing on the water in smaller boats which kind of helps like develop your technique for when you get in the bigger boats in the spring right. um so kind of doing that and also like building up the team culture um kind of meeting the freshmen and showing them like our style of rowing mm -hmm. and kind of how we run things on our team um has been really fun and we just kind of work on kind of settling down from the last season and like looking forward to the new season mm -hmm. um during the fall which is um pretty much our off season or yeah. not off season but we don't compete mm -hmm. and then jumping into the spring when your season mm -hmm. actually starts how does training change and what does that look like so i think like once we get closer to our races we're doing more high intensity like pieces so mm -hmm. kind of um in the More fall we do like yeah we do like lower rating so like kind of the rating is like how many strokes you're taking in a minute and mm -hmm. in a race it's in like in the mid 30s high 30s um and then at practice in the fall it'll be like low 20s so okay. then in the spring we'll kind of like start bumping it up into like the 30 strokes per minute range mm -hmm. a little bit higher um and kind of do more like lactic acid like that type of training mm -hmm. um so it just changes in that way. We still do a lot of cross training and a lot of like totally. long practices, but mm. just kind of adding that into. That's super interesting. Transitioning away from Texas and now into US rowing, mm -hmm. you had an incredible summer, it seemed like, competing in Europe with mm -hmm. US rowing. And with four of your Texas teammates, mm -hmm. it seemed like, right? Yes, yeah. So I want to hear everything about the summer and what competing was like and how you guys won the world championship, U23. Tell me all about it. Yes, okay, so for rowing um, in the summer, there's a couple different ways you mm -hmm. can go to the world championships in the US. There's um, a camp, so that's where they select the eight and the cox for, and you can get invited to camp and then go um, to Virginia and get selected there. Oh, and cool. a couple of our teammates were selected there for the sweet boats and in Oklahoma for the sculling boats, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. And then there's a second way that you can qualify, which is through trials. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, for those events, anyone can show up at trials and then you race and whoever wins the trials gets selected to go. Right. Um, and this year, so the straight four is a four, so each person has one or, but there's no coxswain. Okay. Um, and they added that to trials. So normally you go to camp to get selected for that boat, mm -hmm. but this year it was a trials boat. Mm -hmm. Um, so that gave us like a super unique opportunity to send an all Texas boat mm -hmm. to trials. Cause normally at camp you're getting girls from all over the program or all over the country in different programs totally. like, put into one boat. Mm -hmm. So we, um, kind of put our boat together and then, um, went to trials and then were, um, went to worlds from trials. So that was super cool. Whoa. Um, we got to train in Austin all summer, mm -hmm. which was super unique in high school. Um, we trained in Princeton cause I did the camp Whoa. both years. So okay. very different experience, yeah. like moving somewhere else as opposed to like living at home. Yeah. And being um, so local. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was so nice just having access to like our trainers here and, um, like our coach Dave, um, really great to work with him and all mm -hmm. of our other coaches all summer and just kind of like, we all knew how each other rode and like, yeah, you're how so we familiar raced. with each other. Exactly. So it was really nice to just kind of spend the summer with, um, each other and just like, become even better teammates. So that was super fun. And we raced in Veracy, Italy, which was really fun. So um, cool. It was so cool. <laughs> and like getting to see our other teammates, we hadn't seen them all summer because we were in Austin while they were either in Virginia or Oklahoma. Right. Where our other teammate, um, Sue was also in the pair. So we didn't see her either. And then kind of all coming together. And then we also got to meet some of the freshmen because they were um, there for the junior world championships no way. and some of our international teammates were also there So it's kind of like a big reunion in Italy. Like, yeah, what a cool what reunion. Yeah, it was That's super fun. Awesome. It was really cool <laughs> That is so awesome. talk about a team bonding experience. Yeah, exactly. Everyone so is fun. competing at such a high level right. and succeeding. That's amazing 
Recently, you were named the U23 Rowing Athlete of the Year for the U.S. And that is such incredible recognition Thank and you. such an incredible honor. So what does that mean to you? Um, I'm super honored, especially um, I think it was selected by like other teammates and coaches. So I think oh, it meant even more even to me. Better. Yeah, and I, I think it's like I have so much respect for um, everyone else that was there because the whole U.S. team had a really successful year. Mm -hmm. So I think it was um, like really cool just to see in general, like the progress that U.S. rowing has made and the future of U.S. rowing is just looking really great. Mm -hmm. um, and also a lot of respect for the girls. I know like the ups and downs of the camp experience and like totally. having to live somewhere else mm -hmm. and kind of meeting everyone and adjusting to like new rowing styles and all of that. So mm -hmm. I was very um, honored that like people selected me because I know um, I had a different experience like being in Austin and may not have spent the whole summer with them. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely meant a lot to me. That's amazing. I did not know the teammates and coaches selected that. That means even more. That would yeah. be so amazing. So as your season rolls around in the spring, are there any races or compet competitors that you're most looking forward to going up against? Yeah, so um, my personal favorite race, we have one, and it's usually the first race of the year. It's in San Diego. Um, and it's not like just one or two teams. It's a bunch of teams and including there's like high schoolers there and um, Like masters rowers, oh, wow. which are people older than college. So mm -hmm. it's a huge event and um, We went there in high school, too So I think it's just fun to go back and like see my high school team and just other um, Rowers from like all over mm -hmm. um, It's kind of one of our more like Fun races. I mean, they're all fun in their own way, but definitely this one is like unique and mm -hmm. it's on um, Mission Bay, so it's really pretty. Oh, that's and just, amazing! Like, so fun. Yeah, it's really cool. And I bet that's a different variety of competition than what you're used to, right? Yeah, it's cool because like we just we never really race all those teams at once except for NCAA's because mm -hmm. usually we'll go up to like Princeton for you know one race against Princeton or we'll go to like Michigan to race just Michigan and then here it's like a bunch of different teams brought together right um, and a lot of the um, Pac-12 schools are there and they're super great at rowing so it's really good early on in the season to get to race them and kind of like see how we're doing mm -hmm. and get that match yeah up. yeah exactly get more motivation going through the rest of the season totally so post Texas, after you hopefully win another Big 12 and another Natty, <laughs> what does the future of rowing hold for you? Yeah, so um, my dream has always been to be on the senior team. So that's kind of like um, the national team for people that have graduated college and are trying to train for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, and my goal has always been to make the um, 2024 Olympic team. So definitely gonna oh my uh, train for that, do my absolute best. And then if I didn't make that team, I, I say I would retire, but yeah, I think I would end up just trying again, again <laughs> until it hopefully would happen eventually. So That's incredible. Yeah. Definitely we'll be praying for that for you because you. that would be the most amazing experience. Thank you. You had world championships all over the place, but Olympics, nothing, <laughs> nothing beats that. Yeah, it's so, yeah, exactly. So now we will jump into person behind the athlete where we will get to know more about Kate outside of rowing. So you not only are at Texas to be a rower, but obviously we are student athletes and you are a very good student. So you graduated with a business degree and now you are doing a certificate in sports communication. So tell me a little bit about your academic journey here at Texas. Yeah, so um, I've always been super interested in business because my dad's a business owner. So um, I kind of like helped him with different things around the club going up and like that was my first job and kind of what I do now in my free time. So um, I knew I wanted to go into business and I know Texas has a great business program. Yeah. Um, so I was able to kind of like learn a lot from that program and especially from a lot of the people that I met in the program. Um, during undergrad, I was in a business fraternity called Phi Chi Theta and there I just met like really incredible people that mm -hmm. are super driven and have all these like really ambitious goals that they're gonna do. Totally. So um, it was really cool to be exposed to people like that and even like in athletics, so many successful people. And mm -hmm. so that was super inspiring and um, really cool. Macomb students are built different. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> and then we've talked about your dad and how mm -hmm. big of a part in your life he is, not yeah. only just your family life, but your rowing journey. So mm -hmm. tell us about your family and he seems to be your biggest fan at all the races. So just tell us a little bit about them. 
Yes, um, so I have a younger sister who's two years younger than me and she goes to Chicago. Um, we actually, when we were growing up, we did a lot of sports together. We mm -hmm. both did summer swim team and then volleyball together. So definitely um, pushed me to be, yeah, yeah. It pushed me to be a better athlete because I think um, we never swam really against each other because we were in different age groups. But I think a couple times she would like go into my age group and we'd do relays mm -hmm. together and stuff like that. And like, you never want your little sister to be oh, in no, or do better that than you. Competition. Exactly. So I think that was kind of like, um, where we both like started getting sports together and mm -hmm. she doesn't play sports anymore but um i obviously have rowing with my dad so that's been like a big source of bonding for us mm -hmm. um he is like probably texas rowing's one of the <laughs> biggest fans he comes to every single race yes he has all of it he wears texas rowing gear like every single day <laughs> he'll be at the football Die games hard. like cheering for the rowing team i'm like that's the wrong sport like <laughs> But like he loves different. But yeah, he loves <laughs> loves UT athletics in general, but especially UT rowing. That's amazing. He seems like the biggest fan. I've seen him all over your Instagram yes. and the Texas rowing yes. Instagram. Yeah, so he, is. he definitely has made his appearances. Kate, thank you so much for coming on Mondays in Madison. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for having me. Make sure you guys like this video, comment down below more athletes that you want to see, and subscribe to my channel for new videos every other Monday. So I'm bringing the outro back for my original viewers. This will be a little familiar for some of you and new for others, but the outro is coming back and it's here to stay. So with that being said, see you later, sportsmans.